Hello guys, today I want to show you how to do a 2D takeoff in Bluebeam. We're going to go through the measurement tools and I'm going to show you how to scale and use the measurement tools. Then we're going to jump into a dynamic fill and we're going to see the best practices of using the dynamic fill for scaling and getting the takeoffs. And the last portion, we're going to look at this sketch to scale. This is the best way to sketching while your drawing is scaled. So it's going to save you a lot of time. Without further ado, let's jump into a blue beam so we can start looking at these steps. In this session, we're going to take a look at the measurement tool and also sketch to scale. Um, so we're going to start with this uh, page it's not scaled so we have two different scale on this page right we have one eighth one fourth so in order to scale this page to use edit we're going to use the viewports we're going to click on add viewpoints we want to select the region for each scale so the first one that i'm going to uh, select is one eighth so i go to preset select one eighth for this one and then apply so if you guys see viewpoints is created the scale is one eighth right now i'm going to do the one on top it's a different one which is one fourth um so it's selected apply so right now i have two viewpoints on one sheet so this is going to happen using the viewports where you have multiple scales on one sheet so if you select one it shows you where is one eighth and also is going to show you where is one fourth so let's double check this one i'm selecting the one eighth and then I'm looking at it exactly what the dimension is. You guys see the show scale not set, but actually the sheets is scaled because we're using viewports for each scale because the whole sheet does not have the same scale. So we're gonna double check over here, 17 feet elevation. Yes, is correct. So this is gonna be the great way to select uh, different location or different drawings on one sheet with different scales so you can use viewports to scale multiple details with the different scales on one sheet so here we're going to take a look at the measurement tools and the first thing to start we want to scale the sheet so we know the sheet is not scaled we can scale on y-axis and x-axis so but right now um, I'm just gonna uh, stick to the whole sheet but if you want to do separate on x separate on y you can do that let's just just do one eighth for the whole sheet we can see the sheet is scaled that's the first step the second one we're gonna go to the poly length so I basically want to um, go over this line to get some length you can use these for getting the length of like the conduits mechanical piping plumbing and everything so it's going to give you the total length whatever it is you can also go to the show caption you can kind of check most you can adjust the units and you can click on this this one is basically adding segment or removing segments you can check this style font style you can change the color you can customize it so if you want to label each markup that you create you basically put it over here you put the label on it let's just put this one on the north side and then let's go to the different one you see the north side shows up when i put it in there so the next one let's go to area we know drawing is scaled um let's just get one area to get um so let's just start from here um all the way to the next column and go back let's just get one square and then you guys see exactly the square footage and also if there is something's wrong you can click on it adjust and the square footage gets adjusted as well so you can can go back check the total area it's going to give you the length it's going to give you the width the height of that area right if you want to get the segment gives you a little bit more detail you can label it and name it and I'm gonna show you why we labeling these markups because we'll be using it later on uh, for a better understanding and a better markup so this is basically everything shows at this area let's jump to perimeter um, so we want to see basically what's going on around this little footing right there so I'm just gonna go around it um, create a square 
and then it's basically give me give me the perimeter of that square you can see right here the totals you can add the segments it's going to give you a little bit more details and also you can go to labels and then let's just you know put the name on this one and just kind of call it um the west perimeter so we know exactly we have when you have you guys have like a doing a quantification or a takeoff you'll be able to kind of do that and name it on your drawing so the next item we're going to take a look at it we will be um, using uh, the, the diameter you can if you have let's just put yeah it'll just use this circle over here so i want to get a diameter of this one you basically give me the diameter of it um, I can name it, let's just label it center circle. Okay, and then right now when it's done, I'm going to go to captions and I want to see the circumference. I want to see the area of this. So you guys see as you check all of that, it's going to add more. If you want to get the volume, you need to get the depth. We'll double check, totals, everything is shown on this side. And basically you can get all the info and one item that you have that's going to go for the angle same area radius is going to be the same uh, process with the diameter let's check the volume which is really important like for let's say for the footing you want to get the cubic yard for the concrete pour so you select the area right now you show cubic foot zero because we don't have any depth so you add the depth over here let's put four feet and as soon as you hit enter, it's going to give you the cubic foot. And then right here, you can get the more details of the volume, area of that same location, the length. So it basically gives you everything at these uh, uh, for, for the volume that you have over there. Let's just label it, just call it volume F1 for footing one, let's say, for our practice. So this is basically just uh, a nutshell. Uh, what we have for the measurement, we can go to count. It's pretty easy. You just basically count all the items that you have. Let's say if you want to count all the different type of lighting on your electrical sheet, you can kind of check mark them, check, change the color, and you name them. So the cutout is really important, right? So you have polygon and you have ellipse. So the polygon, you have to be inside the area or the volume. Uh, if you have a, like a, a weird shape, you want to cut out, it basically cut out the middle or whatever you want and give you the rest is everything is going to be calculated so the perimeter i cannot do anything because it basically isn't it's just the perimeter you have to be in area or in volume so let's just try the volume right here i'm going to put like a little bit um circle in one area in that corner and you can see the number is going to change and it goes down to six to six so let me see, let me remove this one go back to ellipse and then put a different so you guys can see it gives you a different volume um, just make sure you know the depth can be changed based on whatever that cutout is so those are really two important for the polygon and the cutout and then the ellipse cutout you can use it on area and volume to kind of remove stuff so the next one that we're going to jump into is going to be the dynamic fill so this is really really helpful and it's going to um, save you a lot of time right to basically um, and do some measurement so just keep in mind everything has to be scaled uh, you need to define the area so I'm going to define this area that I want uh, and when I basically I'm done and click is uh, show the boundaries and then I'm going to put the dynamic fill you just kind of hold the key, uh, the button and I fill it out um, if you want to go um, to it, so these drop downs are, are the def uh, default properties. You can kind of click on it and make sure it gets blue, like it gets highlighted. So let's get the perimeter on that one. I just click and apply. There you go. It just basically give me the perimeters for that area. Um, so this is, this is really, really helpful. You don't have to do all of those stuff. You basically just define the boundaries, fill it back up and then apply whatever you want. Let's just try something else and I wanna show you a quick tip. Let's just connect these two uh, area. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna close the top and I'm gonna use the fill right now and, it's, and, it, and you see when it fills up, it goes out of that and because one side is not poor, if something happened, don't worry about it, close the top and then basically gets adjusted. So this is really helpful. You don't have to do anything else. And right now I'm gonna select volume and perimeter. I'm gonna do 
two. So you guys getting two at the same time, right? And also, um, you guys can see you can use the default properties, but let's stick with that. So it gives me the perimeter, but the volume is zero because I don't have the depth. I put the depth over here. Let's just put three and it gives me the cubic foot for that area. So you guys can see how easy you can define it. You can add as many as you want. You can add areas, you know, you can use perimeter, you can use volume on one shape and you can get everything over there with a dynamic feel. Also, you can add the segment, it gives you a little bit more detail of what's going on in that area. And then that's really, really great. So here there's a filter. You can have the boundary size. You know, the line is going to be thicker or smaller. You can kind of change the color for the different area. You can see the fill size with a different color, edge sensitivity. Make sure you keep it high for most of the time. The main one that we're going to take a look at it for all of these markup and the one we named it is going to be at the markup list, right? So you can see the subject. You can see the page label. Also, comment, author, status, color, length, area, volume. You have these columns under the markup list. So if you basically go um, on, under any of these columns, you'll be able to see that you can check and uncheck any of the columns that you want and you customize, right? You get rid of whatever you don't like, and then basically you keep the columns that you want and you can use it, right? So I know I turn on the label and that's the reason that we name it. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys can see uh, if you have anything added, you'll be able to see it over here. And right now, um, you can basically filter all of these items and um, you, you can kind of check the status over here uh, for every single item is being accepted, removed. These are all customizable. You can change the colors. You can see all the different info under this area. This is really, really helpful. Um, but the last uh, note over here would be the filter and uh, you will be the, the manage column. So if you go down to the manage column, you can see all the columns over here. You can basically select them and move them up and down, right? So if you have like the three main one in front, so you don't have to look at them, you can select them over here, go up and down and then adjust them. So right now you see the area, it's all the way to the page label and I can see it. So this is a great way to export all the markup that you have so the last one that we're going to take a look at it is sketch to scale. So the first thing, let's scale the drawing. That's the first step for every single uh, item. The, the first one is going to be the polygon. So I'm going to basically start and you guys see this is going to be the easiest way because you're sketching and you're scaling it at the same time. Let's just start with this like a small room over here. You can see that already you see some um, info on right here, right? So the area basically give you length everything right here, all the segments uh, for all the areas. And then plus you can follow the same thing, right? You just label it. So I'm gonna put just the office room over here. And you guys can see, you can get the different info from that one. The next one is just a rectangle shape. You can get it easy around each area, pretty easy and fast, bam. And then you can get all the info for that area, right? So it can give you the length area. If you want to add the depth, it's going to give you the volume as well. So um, it's up to you how you want to use it. It's going to give you the width, the height, and uh, basically the slope and whatnot you have in that, in that one. So let's just call this one um, like a room 108E, whatever the name is. And then they have the same thing for ellipse. So if you have any circular shape, let's just do that. I'm going to do this one with the radius. Um, you guys can see basically give you all the info over here. You can also use the hatch, right? You can hatch this area. I can go back to the other one, select a different hatch. So these are all for better communication, um, better communicating uh, all the issues to um, our users, right? So I'm going to use the line right now, the poly line um, or the poly length to basically get exactly that little area, which is shared between the circle and the rectangular. Uh, and also you can kind of change the color. Um, you can kind of adjust them and everything that you want. And you can see all the attributes in this area. So I can name it right there, put it the shared area. 
uh, between those two so you guys are aware what it is same thing so you can see the page label you can see all the area all the comments you can see who the author is this is the same column um, you can customize this you can add more notes to it make sure you use the label and also all of these uh, columns as we discussed can be adjusted right so you can kind of check and uncheck anything that you need and you don't need plus you can kind of move this column back and front to basically get to the item so make sure you're using the sketch to scale or the measurement tools like a two different way um, to get a um, lot of info from all the markups that you have on the drawings and you can basically share and communicate your findings with the users thank you guys for watching today's episode in learning 2d takeoff in bluebeam if you like the content please subscribe and leave a like and let me know in a comment section down below if you are using a different way to scale and doing a takeoff in bluebeam thank you so much for watching see you in the next video mm -hmm.